That is so cool. You want to see? Well, check this out. You guys know I got a big dust collector? Well, got to have a big old pipe and some fittings to go along with it. Can you see where this is headed? You ain't going to want to miss this one. What's up, everybody? Chris here with Chris Cross Crafts. You might be saying, wow, what is all that behind you? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about upgrading your dust pipe from 4-inch dust collection to 6-inch PVC, and in some cases, even 8-inch. Yep, I'm not going to go through all the install and all of that because everybody else has done that. So, we'll do a little different. I'm going to show you the snippets of what I had to do with some tips and tricks in between. So, if you want to see how to install dust collection, you can go look at any other of a thousand videos. But for this one, we're going to talk about the tips and tricks and what I had to do and what I did to make this work. Well, if you watched the dust collector assembly video, you will know it wasn't on that cabinet and it wasn't in that corner. But before we get into that, I figured let me just show you the old layout and you can see where it was in the uh, on the end and it worked its way over and in the middle I had that drop where I had manufactured that manifold system. Everything using four inch. Yeah, don't, don't judge me on the dirt down there. And it went across and went over to the miter station and that was essentially it. It didn't go any further than that. Well, I took some time and laid this out, and pause here if you need to. I stink using SketchUp, so I laid this out in Vectric. Yeah, Vectric, CNC software. But it allowed me to get everything dialed in, get all my measurements right, and get this laid out. Well, knowing I was going to be doing this, I knew I was going to need some help. Well, I was going to be doing this alone, so I made myself a dead man. And I utilized the Micro Jig Match Fit system to do that. So the key is once you get this thing sort of stabilized with the first clamp, like that, push it snug, get it just barely snug. Then you bring this X clamp here, and get that X pad lined up just right there, and you just take advantage of the features on this clamp. So let me get this right here. Just like that. And that will push that up and snug that tight up against the ceiling just like that now no movement that's how that works sexy utilize the X clamp to do a final push to get it perfectly snug now it'll hold parts up there while I'm on the other end running another pipe or whatever Okay, a quick rough photo, uh, roughed in there, far left is CNC, far back is where my uh, planer and bandsaw, and then the center there drop, that is to that manifold. Over there is the miter station, and a little closer look at that, I go from the 6 inch down to a 4 inch, and you can see the blast gate there. Now one key thing is, if you're going to use a lot of pipe, you need a good way to cut it, and I tried hand saw, circular saw, and variety of ways, but I, they're nothing really beat the quality and, and the way the micro jig system worked on my crosscut sled. And I'll link that above in case you have never seen that sled before. But you can see it just makes quick work if you do it right. Just to be able to roll that right around and use those blocks and it wedged between the fence. And I made the mistake of pulling back a little too early. But hey, I recovered. Now I'm going to set up a stop block so that I can get three pieces cut identical. And this is real crucial and you'll see that this made quick work of that and they came out very, very clean. Okay, so I'm working on some 8 inch pipe and I, the inside diameter of 8 inch PVC is just a little over 7 and 7 eighths. The problem is if you're trying to convert that to 8 inch clear hose, well that don't work and you don't really want to put anything else on the inside it reduces the um, the, the inside diameter which would which reduce your airflow but I did find this this is a, a sleeve for HVAC and this literally will slide right in there and I can give that a little bit of a pounding in to drive it in tight to get rid of these little uh, crimped areas that are going to reveal and then on the back side I'm going to come in and smooth that out with some silicone uh, possibly even a layer of tape of this uh, this this tape the film tape very thin layer um, I probably will do that uh, as well so that is what I'm looking at to convert the 8 inch PVC over to 8 inch clear hose now since I'm using this 8 inch PVC 
I needed to reduce that from 8 inch standard PVC down to the uh, 6 inch sewer and drain. Well, the way I solved that problem was the bell end on the sewer and drain actually will fit into a standard 8 to 6 reducer. And that worked out really perfectly. It's really snug, but you drive it in uh, with a mallet lightly and it does a great job and it's seated, you know, all the way back to here. So this is a great transition if you're going to use 6 inch sewer and drain and you need 8 inch PVC, which was all I could find locally. This is the only way that I found to be able to do that and do it well. So the 8 inch to 6 reducer goes right onto the 8 inch pipe and the bell end of the sewer and drain fits right inside of that fitting. Okay, so pro tip here, assemble as much as you can on the bench. I know it's awkward and bulky, but it's a lot easier to do than trying to assemble that on the ceiling, especially with these funky angles and odd parts. So, and you can see that dead man made real good work of that and really did help uh, to support that while I went back and fastened that other end. This gave it a couple of tweaks to make sure it was right. Gave it a little bump in and now I'm ready to fasten it up with the metal band. Now this is a flexible strapping material, real inexpensive, and it does have those perforations and those holes which make it real easy for utilizing bolts or screws uh, to fasten to the ceiling or to your joists. And I'm just using some small screws with uh, nuts to, to make that loop and keep that fastened together and that just makes sure that it's secure uh, when I put it up on the ceiling. And all I'm using into the, the, the rafter above is just a two inch wood screw and I did apply a washer to the head that way it gives it a little more flat uh, and stability against that metal and that will give it a little more support so I'm not worried about the weight pulling through the screw. So anyway that worked out pretty well and I love how I make funky faces. I find I do that quite a bit. And you can see that the, the strapping comes out on a roll and it's real easy to just kind of roll out, cut it, trim it the way where you need it, and then uh, this makes quick work of it. And this is a good shot of the screw going right into the rafter above, wrapped around, and then going to be fastening to the joist on the other side. And I will say it is key if you're going to strap this, be sure you have a long enough screw to reach a rafter and give you plenty of meat into the rafter to hold it but also that you are actually going into a rafter. Don't trust your sheetrock to support this. Uh, these pipes get quite heavy, especially when you add multiple, and I did put plenty of the strapping there. This is a quick shot of the clear view um, six inch to double four. And there's another one, two of them. And those are really nice. Those do have the blast gates installed. And that's a quick shot of the whole unit right there. And you can see the whole shop laid out uh, we're roughed in. There's a couple drops that I need to do. I did this and didn't like it. So we're going to nix that and I'm going to make my own. And this is the blast gate. And I looked for several different options and videos of people doing it and decided I was going to kind of make my own variation of all the options that I saw. And being I was doing something custom, which I'll explain here in just a moment, I needed something custom. So this is what we did. Cut it out on the CNC and made quick work of that and this was a great addition and I could see where I would probably want to do this again in other areas. Okay so I did this a little different you may notice that these are a little larger than this last hole on the back and there's a reason for that. Because of where I ended over there I'm ending with a piece of pipe well I need a bell end or a fitting to go there and a then a piece of pipe so that that fitting on the left of that can fit that. So this is a bell end on the pipe that I cut off and you can see this is going to fit right down in there like that pretty snug. Then I'll have a piece of pipe for the other side that will work that that fitting will then fit back onto. So well, let's hope that works like a champ. So I figured my ramblings were a little confusing, but essentially I needed a piece of bell on one end and a piece of regular pipe on the other. And then I used this scrap piece of uh, L channel from a stand that I never assembled to mount it to the top and that's what's actually gonna fasten between the two joists. Look at the logo, look at that, beautiful. 
and so I took a splice and just cut it and this is what's going to sort of convert uh, from the piece of pipe over to this unique looking system here with this little four inch swivel ball and I couldn't find anything good but I found a rubber boot and that worked fantastic to support the hose and that little splice up to that unit and I wanted to give it a quick test and so one thing was my little portable downdraft table so I hooked up one of the sections of hose to that and I wanted to get an idea of how well that was working because before with the standard uh, unit that I was the dust collector I was using before this did not pull dust very well so this is how this works you open up the gate to the area you want to go to and you can see the dust coming off of there getting pulled right down into that downdraft and it did not do that very well with the one and a half horsepower this dust collector is amazing it really does suck okay so I'm using this BT meter I wanted to get a good idea of just kind of what I was looking at because this was the one of the weaker legs before and I've got it set for the diameter pipe that I'm using look at those numbers that is fantastic that 900 you saw that was with three ports open yeah everything else exceeded the capacity of what the anima meter would read except for the far leg over there and over there I still got 1560 I was worried I was gonna have to change that 8 inch section back out to 6 but I'm happy with that how about you okay so you again you can pause here if you need to these are the readings before and after with the 8 inch uh, and 6 inch pipe versus the old one and a half horsepower that was only four what a difference all right, well, there you go. Here is the dust collection uh, assembly and build uh, from a shop to match that new dust collector. What a difference it is making already. I'll tell you, I'm super impressed. If you've got any questions about any of the tools, materials, or ways that I did things, uh, just leave me a little comment below. I'll be happy to answer them. But keep a lookout for a follow-up video on this where I do a full walkthrough of all of the dust pipe. I give a more of an explanation of what I did and why I did it. Um, hopefully that might answer a few more questions and then of course I may throw in a video on the uh, testing side where I use that BT meter that anemometer to obtain the different CFM readings that I got and um, that made a world of difference too that was worth the money for doing this it really gave me real world numbers of what was happening um, and then I may even throw in a little extra video on the box that I built below the dust collector uh, that huge drawer that I built for that thing what a difference it made for storage. Uh, but hey, you know what? I do appreciate you watching and hanging out with me during this time. If you liked the video or you liked any of the other content you've seen, subscribe down below. Don't forget to click the bell if you want to be notified of future videos. If you didn't like it, don't sweat it. Scroll on by and, uh, you know, we'll see you next time maybe. Well, this is Chris with Chris Cross Crafts throwing together this dust collection pipe and what an upgrade to the shop it has made. And we'll see you next time. Me and my faces. Well, let's look at some of the stuff I use. Not all, but some. The Loctite, this is an all-purpose two-in-one. This works really well for bonding the pipe. This is that flexible strapping. And the foil tape, gotta have it. And the anemometer, that is from BT Meter.